right, ladies and gentlemen, back for part two here um, with this uh, video. Uh, we've got uh, Captain Phenomenal, Kazarni Hardly Knew Ye, uh, and Phenom8809. I'm going to try to address all their questions in this video. Uh, and then tomorrow I'll try to address Kingpin88 and uh, Mr. Kiwi101, uh, their questions. Uh, Captain Phenomenal sent me in two questions. Um, his first one uh, was, do you think there's a double standard between WWE and TNA? Uh, for example, uh, TNA has a Foley, uh, Mick Foley versus Kurt Angle pole match, uh, and it gets a lot of hate for it, yet WWE has Miz vs. Eugene in a pole match, yet does not get any hate for it. Or, uh, TNA changes uh, Samoa Joe's attire and gets hate for it, yet WWE makes Edge into a pansy and does not get hate for it. Um, I don't think it's so much uh, double standard, and once again, uh, this, this can uh, kind of refer to my, my last video, the, the part one of this. Um, it's mainly a booking uh, thing. Uh, I don't think it's so much a double standard thing as it is a booking thing. Um, and and I, forgive me for this, but I don't remember Mick Foley versus Kurt Angle a pole match. Um, that might have been a time where I wasn't watching TNA as much. Uh, or that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not sure, I can't remember uh, it vaguely, but Miz and Eugene, personally, I didn't care that much for this match. Um, it did accomplish what it was set out to do, uh, and that it was get Miz back on Raw, which I, personally, to me, I thought was a bad move, but um, I don't think it's so much a double standard. I think it's more of um, how are they booking it? How are they going about uh, promoting it? How are they, you know, um, if, if they're you know, booking it as this amazing match coming up and it doesn't deliver that, then, yeah, it's going to get a lot of heat for it fr from it, uh, from a lot of people, but, um, it, it's, it's not really so much a double standard as it is, um, a booking issue and, and a, a performance issue, I guess. Uh, so, that, that's my thoughts on the, that, uh, being a double standard. Uh, and his second question is, do you consider yourself a TNA or WWE fan? Uh, and not asking if you prefer one over the other, just asking if you're a fan of either of them. Yes, I am, but it's at a point uh, right now where um, it's kind of hard to be a fan of, of uh, some some things. Uh, SmackDown, uh, I will stand firmly on this, that it's the top WWE show. One of my, it, It's my favorite show right now that WWE is producing. Um, TNA... There's some booking issues uh, that I don't agree with uh, right now, but I still consider myself a fan of them. Uh, same thing with WWE, even though most of their product uh, is not entertaining. Um, and, and, and to be quite honest, it, it's, it's had me uh, considering if I even wanted to be a WWE fan here lately, if I wanted to be a wrestling fan in general as a whole, but... Um, I do consider myself both a TNA and WWE uh, fan. Uh, from what little bit of Ring of Honor I've seen, they impress me. I wouldn't say I'm a I'm a big fan of it, but uh, I'm I'm seen it enough to where I I appreciate it and and it's good. So uh, thank you for those questions, Captain Phenomenal. Because uh, already we hardly knew you, Bobby and Callum. You guys check out their videos. They're they're great, um, and and I always enjoy enjoy uh, talking to them back and forth. Um, their question was JR enjoys comparing current wrestlers to the wrestlers of the past uh, who would you compare the following wrestlers to and why and you give me a list of five wrestlers um, and basically he said I can make a combination of, of, of wrestlers and whatnot. Um, the first one he said was CM Punk and if I had to compare CM Punk to somebody um, if, 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 if it's more of the uh, old CM Punk where he was doing submission moves and whatnot, I would compare him more uh, to Chris Benoit, and with what little bit of high flying that he does, Eddie Guerrero, um, uh, I would I would compare to those two. Uh, and it, but his his wrestling ability isn't quite there too much yet, but it's got it's gotten better than what it's been. Um, I mean him and him and John Morrison put on some great matches uh, here in the past you know um, month or so on on SmackDown. Uh, CM Punk really. Uh, he rem he reminds me of, of somewhat of the Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero with it with his high flying uh, and and submission abilities and, and who knows they might um, 
mention that uh, King Ten Eighty Eight actually has a question here. Or, no, Mister Kiwi One Hundred One has a question about it. Um, about uh, you know submission wrestlers, you don't see it much anymore. Uh, but as far as the submission self, CM Punk, I'd compare him to Chris Benoit, uh, and with his high flying aspect, I'd compare him to Eddie Guerrero. Uh, and I know that those are some interesting combinations, but that that's mainly why I do that. Um, John Cena, and this is a big comparison that has always been heard. Um, I I honestly I compare him to Hulk Hogan and The Rock, uh, just mainly because of his. Uh, microphone skills and um, just overall persona. Uh, as far as wrestling, once again, I would compare them to The Rock and Hulk Hogan. Uh, while they weren't the best uh, wrestlers in the world, they could entertain you on the microphone. Uh, uh, Rock was a better wrestler of, of between him and Hogan, personally, but um, I guess he'd have the, the wrestling ability of Hulk... The, well, the wrestling and persona ability of Hulk Hogan... Uh, and the the persona ability of the rock. So, um, the next one is is the Miz, and I'm I'm basing this quite frankly I'm 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 basing this on the ego type character of him. Um, the Miz I'm comparing to Mr. Perfect and Ravishing Rick Rude because the uh, I'm better than you ego is, is what he's got going for him. Uh, and you can even say that about Dolph Ziggler, honestly. Um, so, Miz, uh, you know, the, Mr. Perfect and Ravishing Rick Rude were great wrestlers. Uh, but I'm mainly comparing to Mr. Perfect and Ravishing Rick Rude as far as the persona goes. Um, and I really don't know who I'd compare him to as far as the wrestling goes because uh, certainly his, his wrestling isn't uh, as great as Mr. Perfect or Ravishing Rick Rude. Uh, but he's got that persona of, of Ravishing Rick Rude and Mr. Perfect. Uh, Randy Orton, uh, quite simply, Triple H, uh, heel Triple H. Um, he, you know, and the more recent heel Triple H, to be more specific. Uh, and and quite frankly, he, he's hung out with him quite a bit. So, of course, he's going to have uh, learned a lot from Triple H. And, and I, he just reminds me of, of Triple H, a heel Triple H, because... Uh, no matter how much you of a bad guy he is, people still cheer him to an extent. And, and Triple H is that way. Uh, no matter what he's doing, he, he's usually getting cheered by somebody. Um, so that's that's my Randy Orton uh, comparison. And Jack Swagger, uh, mainly just the basis of the wrestling, pure wrestling ability, uh, I'm comparing him to Kurt Angle because uh, he's, he's just an amazing athlete. Uh, in the ring and out of the ring. So, because um, I don't even hardly knew you. Thank you for those questions. I'm going to get this question. i got two more minutes to, before I'm at reach the limit. Uh, from Phenom8809, if Linda McMahon runs for Senate and steps down the CEO of WWE and Vince takes that position over, will it make the product better or worse? And it all depends on if uh, Vince steps down uh, from the, the chairman position or if he keeps the chairman position and CEO position. Um, if, if he keeps both positions, I'd say it'll be a turn for the worse, uh, because he'll have more power in the company. I mean, yes, he's the owner of it and all that, uh, but overall, I think it would be uh, a worse product if he has, holds both, uh, positions. Of course, that would be a lot of pressure on him, uh, so he would have to, uh, probably take a step back from the creative aspect, so... Uh, if that happened, then it, it might get better in the long run. So uh, it, it's really hard to say uh, what would happen there. So uh, Phenom8809, thank you for that question. I'm going to end this video here. Uh, I'll do part three tomorrow, uh, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, but for right now, this has been the Russell Cage Experience, and this has been my Q&A session. Uh, thank you all for watching. You guys, take it easy, and peace out.